So um, I, I don't know how much you expect to get out of a lightning talk, but um, I will share with you what I can about going mobile. This is supposed to be inspirational, mostly. Uh, so how many of you are targeting mobile or think are like have shipped mobile? Okay, all right. Well, not, this talk's over because. <laughs> all right. So um, yeah, what's interesting is that most Godot devs aren't. Um, I was really surprised to see this in the uh, community poll. Like only 30% of people targeting Android, less than 10% targeting iOS. Quite shocking. I would like to see that change. That was some of the inspiration for me wanting to give this talk. So if you didn't raise your hand, you will be raising your hand after this talk. <laughs> because, what's that? Or else. Or else. No, no, I'm, no, because you're going to be inspired by this slide. <laughs> this is where the money's at. So those are billions of dollars. And uh, you can see all the billions are in the mobile column. So. <laughs> All right. Now, I was surprised when I saw that survey come out that said people aren't targeting mobile, but I shouldn't have been because I'd actually been perusing uh, Itch looking for games that would play well because we, you know, we were thinking about web export. And uh, so I was looking for games that would run well on mobile. And in fact, one of our users, I think it was you in our user group, was like, you know, wanting to use web export. We had Adam coming in. So I'm like excited about this web export thing. But like, of these 58,000 games on Itch, if I went through a random sampling of the popular apps, they are not mobile friendly. In fact, this is my observation. If your game is keyboard only, it is mobile hostile. <laughs> like, like so many games I've tried to load from Itch on my phone just don't work because it's keyboard. People are only setting up input maps for keyboard. If I inspire you to do one thing, it is to set up more input maps than just that. Because the fact is, if you even just had Bluetooth controller support, that works. Web export, good old web export with Bluetooth controller, it actually works just great. So, um, you know, I don't know how many people are pairing Bluetooth controllers to their phone. I'm willing to do it, or maybe to their tablet. So, uh, so I would encourage you to at least consider adding those input maps. It's worth it. Um, so here's a few other things you can do. Easy wins, if you will. Emulate mouse from touch. You probably see that setting, or if you haven't, Anyways, you can turn it on. It doesn't cost you much. I don't see a downside. It might even be on by default. Um, right next to that setting is emulate touch for mouse. I share that because as you start to think more about targeting mobile, you might have touch buttons or touch interactions. You can turn this feature on or not. You should be deliberate in whether you turn settings on. So you know, consider turning it on. I use it for testing when I'm on the desktop because I want to touch a lot, test a lot of touch stuff. And I have a mouse. So. Um, this is where you find those settings. Those are the settings from a project I opened. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next step, if you really want to like up your game mobile-wise, consider using on-screen controls. This is my favorite asset in the asset library. Emmy asked recently on Blue Sky what people's favorite asset was, and I sent him a link to that. Um, this works great. It's very powerful. There are other alternatives, but this is my favorite because it just works. Um, and this is their screenshot, but they have two of those on screen. That works just fine. So you can put two on screen. Um, and uh, you know, then you have joystick controls. So if you set up input maps and you map the signals, they're like, you're, you're off to the races. What I really like about this one, when I compared it to some of the other assets that were in the asset library, is it has these powerful settings. So joystick mode, fixed, dynamic, or following. I, I don't know. I should have taken a screenshot of it saying following, because following is what I use. So uh, following just means that when you're touching the area that the control's in, it's going to follow your touching around the screen. The other feature that I love is always touch screen only or when touched. I think, I'm opinionated, I think when touched is the right setting. And the reason is because, you know, typically I'll go in, and the way I think you can use it, and I'm, and I'm working on like, maybe I'll make, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll submit a contribution back that says, Hey, here's a scene you could use. But anyways, my favorite, my, my go-to move is to add a scene that has a canvas layer and set it to auto load. And then have some H stacks in there that split the screen in half and have those two controls filling half the screen set to only visible when touched. And now I have touch screen controls that aren't in the way if you're on the desktop. You don't see them. They just work if you happen to have deployed to mobile. So anyways, I would, I would recommend that approach and maybe like we can see more of that. Um, anybody's interested in that, come talk to me with the limited time we have left after this. Uh, we'll see if we can improve the world for that. Okay, screen size and orientation. There's a great doc on 
the Godot documentation under rendering multiple resolutions. I thought about trying to digest this, and I was like, no, that, that's not going to fit in the lightning talk. So you know, this talks a little bit about orientation and uh, what resolutions to pick and how to pick for mobile. I have, that's my favorite doc on the site. So I would just recommend you go see it. The one thing I'll call out from that is orientation. So when you start thinking about setting up the settings for your project, you can pick landscape, portrait, and sensor landscape and sensor portrait. And like just to return to my theme for this talk, like be deliberate in what you choose because like if you have an iPhone that has this island floating in the middle of the screen, you maybe don't want sensor if that's going to end up covering up things that people, you know, might want to see. So, uh, but I like sensor. I just think, I just, you know, when I'm looking at the size of things, I just think, okay, I don't know which way they're going to hold the screen. So anyways, those are options for you. Go check out that doc. Uh, the next thing I was going to do, and when I was inspired to give this talk, the rendering situation was kind of troublesome. But then 4.4 came out, and these next three slides became much less relevant, especially to mobile development. But I'm going to just cover them real quick, because basically, when you're picking a renderer, you go with forward plus, you go with mobile, you're not getting web. But the situation is great. So like I, what I'm saying is before 4.4, this was actually even more confusing. But now in 4.4, iOS has a metal back end for both mobile and forward plus. It works great. I have no strong opinions on Android. Uh, so you know maybe other people do like, uh, yeah, I wish I knew more about that. I would have I told you something. Uh, OpenGL is what you got to use for web. Apparently, it runs faster on Android. I, uh, you know, OpenGL story is not great on iOS. That's, that's Apple's fault. So I don't, blame, I don't hold anybody from Godot responsible for that. All right. In conclusion, there's lots of mobile users out there. They have money. <laughs> <laughs> Godot has a great story here. And, uh, you know, if you're just doing keyboard only, like think about adding some mobile in there. I, I as, a, as, a, as a gamer, would appreciate it. I think other people would too. So thanks, everybody.